Let's get started with chemistry 30. So we are going to dig into a first unit, which is thermochemistry and also our first chapter. Uh, in your textbook, this does cover chapters 9, 10, and 11. They're all super short chapters. There's no reason for to do it in three chapters instead of uh, our usual two. So in order to try and balance things out and not cram you with three chapter tests, I am doing this as two chapters that stop midway through. Our learning objectives for today is being able to define energy changes in chemical reactions. The reason we want to do this is we want to be able to quantify how much energy is being lost and gained. Our success criteria is being able to define enthalpy and relate it to delta H, being able to differentiate between kinetic and potential energy changes, and being able to relate changes in kinetic energy to changes in potential energy. So when we describe chemical changes, we get a lot of information out of chemical reactions. They tell us about what species, atoms, molecules, and ions are reacting with each other, how many moles of them are required, what's a reactant, what's a product. But now what we're going to do is we're going to add descriptions of energy to that reaction as well. We know that chemical reactions are either exothermic or endothermic from previous years. But instead of just saying, well, this feels warm, we can actually quantify and write the amount of energy gained or released as part of a chemical reaction. All chemical reactions come with some type of energy change. And this is because in every chemical reaction, bonds get broken and then bonds get formed. And the breaking of bonds adds potential energy to a chemical and the releasing of that potential energy occurs when new bonds get formed. Where does that energy come from? Well, the energy that gets added and released is transferring between chemical potential energy and kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion of particles, which we actually measure as temperature. So when something feels like it's getting warmer as a result of a chemical reaction, really what's happening is the reaction is converting chemical potential energy into kinetic energy, making the particles move faster. We typically measure this energy change in kilojoules, but sometimes we will measure it in joules. And it's very important in thermochemistry to keep track of what you're calculating for. Is it joules or is it kilojoules? Because that makes a huge difference in your final answer. Because one kilojoule is, of course, 1,000 joules. An important thing about this, though, is we don't have a way of measuring the absolute amount of energy in a uh, molecule. It's kind of like how you can't just completely burn everything until all of the particles become energy, because that's not actually burning a chemical reaction. That's a nuclear reaction, converting matter into pure energy. So we can't actually measure exactly how much energy there is in any given particle. But what we can do is we can assign a zero point, a standard against which we measure other particles. That standard is going to be our elements. When we do these measurements, we've decided that elements at SATP have a thermochemical value of zero kilojoules. Why use elements? Well, because elements are our base starting point, and it actually makes the math that we're going to see later on very clean and easy compared to if they weren't. So just like we assign zero at the freezing point of water in the Celsius scale, we assign zero to 
the amount of energy in any given element at SATP. Now, does that mean that all elements have the same amount of energy? No, it doesn't, but we can compare any compound to the elements that it's formed out of. So that gives us a good idea as to whether energy is going to be gained or lost. We call this difference, this gain or loss of energy, enthalpy. It sounds a little bit like entropy, and the two concepts are related, but we're not going to do anything with entropy this year. Enthalpy is the total kinetic and potential energy of a chemical system. We most often use enthalpy in terms of delta H, the change in enthalpy which allows us to record whether a chemical system is gaining or losing energy, whether it is endothermic or exothermic. So the calculations for this are straightforward. H is enthalpy. If we want to find the change in enthalpy, delta H, and you're going to use delta H a lot, we take the enthalpy of the products and we subtract the enthalpy of the reactants. It is the difference between the enthalpies of the products and the reactants. And we can see that visualized here. As enthalpy changes, if you start with high potential energy, the enthalpy changes so there is an energy loss. Over time, it goes down to a low potential energy. However, that energy loss in potential energy gets converted directly into a gain in kinetic energy. So actually, when you're losing potential energy, things appear to heat up, which might seem slightly contradictory, but remember, when it's losing energy, it's moving faster. It's converting that chemical energy into movement so it can actually move faster, and that we feel as a higher temperature. If the delta H of a reaction is negative, like it would be in this graph, because the potential energy decreased, then a reaction is exothermic, and it will be written as part of the products of a reaction. If delta H in a reaction is positive, then it will be endothermic, and it will be written as part of the reactants in the reaction.